Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMF Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. So, uh, you're looking at this word, right? Shrimp can. And probably wondering what it's all about. Well, uh, you might guess it's a uh, mnemonic, okay? And these actually can help you remember larger, uh, you know, bulks of information. Um, and actually, this is one that uh, I had never heard before uh, in all my years as a uh, paramedic. I never heard this mnemonic before. Uh, maybe it's some sort of a southern thing, or uh, maybe it's because I'm not a, don't really use them myself. I don't really find them all that helpful. Um, but a lot of people do, and they can help you remember this, you know, again, lots of information that we have to sort of memorize, and they can help. Um, and of course, you know, I, I heard about this when I was talking to uh, one of my partners I was working with, and uh, he mentioned it, and I don't know what the hell he was talking about. And then when he told me what it was, then it sort of made sense. So I looked it up, and I uh, looked up exactly what it meant and what you can use it for and I'm going to share it with you now if you've never heard of what shrimp can is and basically what it is it's about shock and helping you remember the different types of shock that there are so let's go over them and we'll break it down a little bit here uh, so S and H of the shrimp right first is the septic septic shock or sepsis and well, most of the time, that's a gram-negative sort of infection or an overwhelming infection that a patient has, okay? Uh, the hypovolemia shock, which I'm sure that is one of the more common ones and that everybody sort of doesn't really need help remembering that, right? And that's the, you know, things from hemorrhage, dehydration, vomiting, diarrhea, peritonitis, uh, pancreatitis, we can have an aneurysm that's leaking, or even an atopic pregnancy. Now, the... R and the I, okay? Well, R is the respiratory type of shock, with, you know, compromise of the respiratory system from hypoxia, uh, tension pneumothorax, maybe a massive pulmonary embus, and then ingestion. This is one of the ones we kind of got stuck on. We were trying to memorize, just say it off the top of our heads what the shrimp can meant, and the I, we would kind of get them stuck on that the, what the I was, and, and then it was, made sense after, right? It was the ingestion, but the ingestion of, let's say, a toxic, toxic sort of substance or a drug overdose of some type. Now, M and P, to finish off the shrimp, well, you get the metabolic causes of shock, right? Things like diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, hyperosmolar coma, max edema, uh, adrenal insufficiency, electrolyte imbalance, abnormalities, uh, imbalances, these types of things can cause a metabolic type of, of shock. And then you get your psychiatric causes as well. And then what about CAN? Well, you got C, which is another, you know, one that you need to be aware of, that cardiogenic shock, right? That acute MI, uh, the cardiomyopathy, cardiac tamponade, dysrhythmias of different types, severe cardiac failure. Uh, maybe it's a valvular type disease or uh, something along those lines, okay? And then, of course, anaphylactic shock. We all know what that, that is and the causes of that. And then neurogenic type shock causes, things like spinal shock, maybe a herniation type syndrome or an intracranial bleed. So that's shrimp can, guys. And again, just a nice uh, mnemonic that you can use to sort of help you remember the different different types of shock and maybe a broader sort of uh, thing that you can be thinking about, okay, when you think about a patient that's in shock, okay? So use it to help you sort of narrow down the different uh, things that could be going on with your patient and think about the different types of shock and break it down a little further to help you sort of diagnose what's going on in your patient so that maybe you can correct it or take them to the proper facility. And don't forget guys, shock is primarily a, a uh, uh, you know, the three different things that can be causing it. One, of course, is the rate, your cardiac rate, right? If the heart's contracting too slowly to meet the patient's metabolic demands, maybe it's, it's beating too rapidly to allow the heart to uh, fill during diastole. Um, and this can result in that, uh, you know, it's a, a decrease in cardiac output. Or it can be a pump problem, right? Maybe it's a, um, a heart abnormality that's, that's, 
causing an inadequate uh, uh, cardiac output. Okay, maybe you got a decrease in pre a decrease in preload. Uh, maybe it's a vascular obstruction that results in an inadequate venous return coming back to the heart, right? And that can end up resulting in a decrease in cardiac output as well. Or it can be a volume problem, right? And that could be a, a vascular volume loss, which is can be from a hemorrhage, uh, or it could be maybe a systemic fluid loss, right? And this is going to result in, in maybe uh, vasodilation, or it can be third space fluid loss, and then you're going to get that hypotension. So I hope these Monday Minutes help you out. Listen, guys, if you want some more training information, some more videos and audios and downloads and things like that, go check out Turbomatic, guys. You can become a free or a premium member at Turbomatic, and you can get access to a very, very wide range of EMS study and training tools, okay? And this also includes a lot of uh, popular web apps that you might see out there. There's a, a member interaction is encouraged as well, including a, a uh, Facebook private Facebook group there as well. So go check that out, guys. It's free to uh, members, okay, free and premium. All right, so we'll check that out at turbomatic.com, or you can just click here on this graphic. It'll take you over to the page, and you can check it out there. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, any questions, concerns, uh, send them over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. Until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman, stay safe.